next part is so hard and so daunting that the person who wrote this list didn't even include it on the list. <laughs> right? Anybody want to hazard a guess as to what the next part is? Anyone? Next part of being a successful author? Marketing. Giving it to the editor. Marketing. <laughs> exactly. Marketing. So the second half of the Lee Carlson Successful Writer's Pledge is this. Ready? Raise your right hand. Whatever hand it is. I do solemnly swear that I will work my butt off. I do solemnly swear that I will work my butt off. To do a great job promoting, marketing, and selling my new baby. To do a great job promoting, marketing, and selling my new baby. All right. So why is this a new baby and not just a book? Because it needs nurturing, feeding, love, affection, and attention every minute of every day after you publish it. You can't just publish a book and put it on a shelf and expect it to sell itself. What I want to talk about tonight is how do you nurture your new baby? How do you promote, market, and sell your new book? First, the bad news. Writing a book, as incredibly hard as it is, is the easy part. <laughs> marketing is the really, really, really hard part. And in the new publishing economy, publishers are cutting way back on promotion budgets, leaving marketing up to the author. Now for the good news. Thanks to amazing advances in technology, the opportunities to promote your book globally and inexpensively have never been easier. The other good news, promoting a book has always been a challenge. This is nothing new, especially for new authors. One of my favorite stories is about Mark Twain, who's one of my heroes. And he's one of my heroes because he worked as a boat captain, as I have, he traveled extensively as I have. And he heard many of his best stories in bars, which, <coughs> yeah, I've done the same thing. <laughs> But most importantly, he wrote really, really great books. He was a great public speaker, and he was a superb self-promoter. When Twain wrote his first book, The Celebrated Jumping Frog of Cavalleras County, he dedicated the book to John Smith. Twain didn't have a particular John Smith in mind, <laughs> but he figured John Smith was the most common name in America. <laughs> and that many people not named John Smith would buy the book. True story. So you can see that the best writers are always thinking of creative ways to sell their books. Twain's book was published in 1867. What was state-of-the-art communication in 1867? The first telegraph line connecting both coasts was finished in 1861. The first transatlantic telegraph cable was completed in 1866. And the Transcontinental Railroad was finished in 1869. Now, 150 years later, we can communicate instantly around the world. Smartphones, radio, television, and most importantly, the internet. We have an abundance of exciting new tools to promote our work. I've worked extensively in marketing, and I've always been an early adopter of new technology, so I understand the potential of these new marketing venues. Facebook, Twitter, eBlast, computer links to Amazon, eBooks, websites, blog posts, etc. But the first thing I did with my own book was I emulated Mark Twain. I formed my own publishing company, I opened an account with the world's most state-of-the-art printed demand prayer. His computers linked to Amazon, not only in the US, but in Canada, the UK, Germany, France, and Japan, as well as other online booksellers in countries such as Australia and India. And not to Twain, I did my own little inside joke with my book. The name of my publishing company is Henry Chapin and Sons. <laughs> Henry is my dog, Chapin is my middle name, and I have two sons. <laughs> Best of all, you know, this is the best part of the joke, Henry Chapin and Sons has headquarters in New York, Tokyo, and London. It says so right in the book. <laughs> <laughs> you can look it up. But there is a serious side to my little joke. It symbolizes the global nature of the new world we live in. Henry Chapin and Sons doesn't really have a headquarters. It's a virtual company. To give you an idea of what I mean by the new global reality, Passage to Nirvana is only available in English. No translation. I have not sold any foreign rights. I don't have to. I promote Passage to Nirvana using Twitter, Facebook, etc. I use a printer connected to online booksellers worldwide. And Passage to Nirvana is available as an instant download for the Kindle, iPad, and other e-readers, both on my website, on the Apple website, on the Amazon website, and many websites. As a result, my second largest fan base after the US is in Indonesia. Ready for this? 
passage to Nirvana now has fans in the United States, Canada, Mexico, the Bahamas, Puerto Rico, Argentina, Brazil, Bolivia, Chile, Ecuador, Venezuela, Ireland, United Kingdom, France, Italy, Austria, Croatia, Czech Republic, Russia, Poland, Bulgaria, Algeria, South Africa, Turkey, India, Nepal, Bangladesh, Vietnam, Singapore, Malaysia, Indonesia, the Philippines, and Australia. Wow. How did I accomplish this? Number one, I wrote a great book. <laughs> Number two, and if you don't believe me, go to www.passagenirvana.com and read all the testimonials people there and all the five-star reviews and reviews and reviews. Two, I designed a great book, layout, topography, cover art. Three, I've already told you about the nerdy behind-the-scenes publishing part, but I'll repeat it. Very important for not demand, computers, worldwide distribution. Four, I marketed the book before it was published, kickstarter.com, a website, emails to all 3,000 people, my address book. Five, as soon as the book was published, I set up the Facebook fan page. Twitter account, YouTube channel. Six, I still did all the old-fashioned marketing, review copies, readings, book fairs, etc. Seven, I ran ads on Facebook, social media, and it posted on a radio show. And finally, most importantly, I took a new pledge. I, Lee Carlson, will continue to work <laughs> my butt off to do a great job promoting marketing and selling my new baby, including speaking engagements. Thank you very much. Because 
you know, it's a major publishing house and all the accounting and everything, right? So the next time you decide to self-publish this book, or a little publishing company, you told me the other day, he's now made over a million dollars on that self-published book over the course of 10 years, right? Because every, the first year was like 50,000, next year was 100. And he's got, a, you know, he's on TV, he's got a practice, he does workshops, so he's got, but, you know, he's out there selling it. So over time, he much preferred to self-publish the book because he made a lot more money than the Website. They've only been in business for a year and a half. Uh, they're what's called crowdfunding. Um, they're a site for anybody in the arts. If you've got a book, you've got your musician, your videographer, anything you think of, your poet, um, you can raise money on that site. And you put up your project, you put up a video about what you want to do, you get a pick a time period like 90 days of what your goal is. You want to raise $10,000, you want to raise $20,000, you want to raise five dollars whatever. And then, um, People donate. They donate five dollars. They donate twenty-five dollars, and you, you give them something back. But you say, okay, you'll get a signed copy of the book when it's published. Um, I raised um, thirteen thousand dollars, well more than more than I was looking for, just to, for that initial self-publishing. Um, and by doing that, the reason I did more so for the money was that I knew that I would have a core group of hundreds of people who would really promote my book. I felt like they had an ownership of my book, and they'd start telling other people, and they'd start telling. So that was a key strategy really on. The other strategy that I found, I mean, they all work, but the, my two favorites are Facebook, really engaging people on Facebook, as well as running Facebook ads. Facebook ads are the cheapest way to reach people. You cannot believe it. It's, if anybody knows about cost of the and all that sort of stuff, you can target. Like, I run different ads. I run ads that run just in overseas markets that have different photos and say something different. Um, when I used to be in the magazine business, you know, we'd sell ads say to people, well, you know, run a full page, and say to Chrysler, run a full page ad with us, you're going to reach a million people, but we have no idea who those people are. Maybe we did it some point, yeah, okay. Whereas this is, you only pay if somebody clicks on your ad or interest in your book. Um, and then the second part of that is email marketing. You just need to keep sending out emails to people reminding them you're there. Uh, it's sort of more, I guess, the traditional method of what used to be direct mail, but now it's just all done. That's, that still is old school for using the technology that still works. Through the key marketing strategy? Um, there are two distinctly different animals. Big box bookstores, the Barnes & Noble, and small kind of bookstores, right? Barnes & Noble had what they call a small press division run by a woman named Marcella Smith. They just fired her about four or five months ago and shut down her division. So that's done. They're not doing any more small press stuff. They, this is what I mean by changes in the publishing business. Everybody from the bookstores to the publisher the agent are all looking for the big blockbusters by people that are famous or famous, right? Now, the small independent bookstores are a whole different matter. You know, and, and the, the shutting down of borders may, in fact, you know, give some new life to some of these independent bookstores, which would be great. If you have a specific um, niche, and you can find bookstores that specialize in that niche. And there are bookstores around the country that, you know, if you're, if, if you're, yeah, cookbooks or poetry or self or whatever. Yeah, you know, do the research, find them, contact them, and uh, try and get your book. And that's the best way because I got to tell you, um, you know, the flyers that go out from all the various agencies and groups and stuff, if you ever go into a bookstore buyer's office in a small press or a small bookstore, I mean, it's a riot. It's just piled high with stuff. They, you know, they don't want the flyers. So you got to get in there. You've got to. You got money.